Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. Please subscribe and keep watching more details. The Curse of Oak Island discovers another ancient artifact. The Curse of Oak Island has made a ton of progress this season. They have dug far underground for the first time and might have found underground caverns. The team got back into the swamp for the first time since last year. They also have discovered more at the Money Pit. In the most recent episode, they found another ancient artifact. This one might have a connection to ancient Rome. Curse of Oak Island finds possible Roman artifact. The team from Curse of Oak Island has found quite a few interesting things on the island this season. In the last episode, Gary Drayton and Jack Begley took the metal detector out and discovered a huge find. They found an artifact that might date back to ancient Rome and could lead to more speculation about who was on the island so many years in the past. The artifact was a circular-shaped coin that was made of lead. It had two holes in the middle of the coin and what looked like ornate scalloping around the sides. According to Gary, it might have been a trade token used thousands of years ago. Emma Culligan, the archaeometologist, placed it in the XRD, X-ray diffraction analysis, scanner. According to Emma, it looks like the coin came from either Iran or Sardinia, which is off the coast of Italy. She also said the lead was pure which meant this was a very old find for the team. With the thought of ancient Rome, Emma said ancient Rome used mines in Sardinia. Last week, Italian researcher Emiliano Sacchetti spoke to the team and talked about Ralph de Sudoli. He was a 12th-century Templar knight who Sacchetti thinks might have looted treasures from Jerusalem and taken them to North America. Who is Ralph de Sibley from Curse of Oak Island? This is not the first time that Ralph de Sibley's name has come up on the Curse of Oak Island. Way back in Season 6, the team spoke about this Templar and what he might have to do with the island itself. 88-year-old researcher Zena Halpern passed away around that season, and Rick Ladina mourned her loss as she introduced the team to documents in Season 4 about the Knights Templar and their possible connection to Oak Island. At the core of Zena's research was the Cremona document. This was discovered in a church in the 1970s in Italy and had a collection of maps, ciphers, and journal entries. It is believed that 12th-century Templar knight Ralph de Sudoli partially authored them. This was when the team began to think he brought the looted treasure to Oak Island. The Curse of Oak Island, a show that has captivated audiences with its mysterious allure and endless quest for hidden treasure, reached another thrilling milestone. For years, Rick and Marty Lagina, along with their dedicated team, have delved into the enigma that is Oak Island, a small landmass off the coast of Nova Scotia, Canada. The island, shrouded in legend and lore, has whispered of lost riches, ancient secrets, and a curse that has plagued treasure hunters for centuries. This time, however, their relentless pursuit led them to something truly extraordinary, a discovery that could change everything. It was an unusually bright morning on Oak Island, the air was filled with a sense of anticipation, a kind of electric charge that hummed in the background as the team prepared for another day of excavation. For months, they had been focusing on a particularly promising section of the island, an area near the infamous Money Pit, which had long been believed to be the hiding place of an unimaginable fortune. The team had uncovered tantalizing clues in this area, fragments of old manuscripts, traces of gold and pieces of wood that hinted at the existence of hidden chambers deep underground. But on this day, they would find something that even the most optimistic among them hadn't dared to dream of. As the excavation team carefully drilled into the earth, the drill bit suddenly hit something solid. The sound was distinct, different from the usual grind of rock and soil. The drill operator, experienced in the subtle nuances of underground discovery, immediately knew they had struck something significant. Hold up. We've hit something, he called out, and the team quickly gathered around, their hearts racing. The drill was carefully withdrawn, and as the team peered down into the dark hole, they saw a glimpse of something metallic, something that glinted in the dim light. What they pulled out was nothing short of astonishing. It was a small, intricately crafted artifact, covered in layers of dirt and grime that spoke of its age, the object was roughly the size of a human hand, shaped like a disc with strange symbols etched along its edge. The surface of the disc was adorned with what appeared to be a map, but not a map of any known land. The lines were precise, almost geometric, 
and in the center of the disc was a raised relief of a serpent devouring its own tail, a symbol known as the Ouroboros, an ancient emblem representing eternity, cycles, and the unity of all things. The team was silent for a moment, awestruck by the artifact's beauty and mystery. Then, almost in unison, they erupted in excitement. This was no ordinary find, this was something ancient, something that could predate even the earliest known civilizations. As they carefully cleaned the artifact, more details emerged. The symbols around the edge were a mix of what seemed to be runes and hieroglyphs, an impossible combination that suggested a connection between cultures long thought to have never interacted. The material of the disc was equally perplexing. It was a metal unlike any they had ever seen, neither gold nor silver, but something darker, with a sheen that hinted at otherworldly origins. The discovery sparked a frenzy of speculation among the team. Some believed it could be a relic from the Knights Templar, who have long been linked to Oak Island through legend and conspiracy. Others suggested it might be even older, possibly a creation of the ancient Phoenicians, known for their seafaring prowess and mysterious ways. A few of the more imaginative minds among them wondered if the artifact could be extraterrestrial in origin, a gift or curse from beings beyond the stars. But as the day wore on and the artifact was taken to their makeshift laboratory on the island for further analysis, a sense of unease began to settle over the group. The more they studied the disc, the more they realized that it was not just a map, but a key, one that could unlock something buried deep beneath the island, something that had been hidden away for millennia. That night, as the team gathered around the fire to discuss their next steps, a storm began to brew on the horizon. The winds howled through the trees, and the sea lashed angrily against the shore, as if the island itself was warning them to stop, to turn back before it was too late. But the team was undeterred. They had come too far, and the discovery of the artifact had only strengthened their resolve to uncover the truth. Yet, as the storm raged outside, the team could not shake the feeling that they were being watched, that the island was alive with eyes that followed their every move. The artifact now lying on the table between them seemed to pulse with a life of its own, its strange symbols glowing faintly in the firelight. And then, without warning, the lights flickered and went out. The room was plunged into darkness, and for a moment, all was silent except for the howling wind. When the lights came back on, the artifact was gone. Panic set in as the team searched frantically, but the disc had vanished without a trace. It was as if the island had reclaimed it, pulling it back into the depths from which it had emerged. In the days that followed, the team continued their search, but the artifact was never found. They were left with more questions than answers, haunted by the realization that they had come tantalizingly close to uncovering a secret that could have rewritten history. The curse of Oak Island had struck again, reminding them that some mysteries are not meant to be solved, and that the island's secrets are protected by forces beyond their comprehension. But even as they packed up their equipment and prepared to leave the island, the team knew that they would return. The island's pull was too strong, its mysteries too deep, and the lure of the unknown too irresistible. For on Oak Island, the past is never truly buried, and the curse that guards its treasures will continue to draw in those brave enough, or foolish enough, to seek them out.